Hey guys, what's up? I didn't want to bore you by showing you the same old knives that you've seen over and over again, so I'm just going to voice over some uh, footage of me playing around on the sketchbook and absolutely had no idea what I was going to do when I hit the sketchbook. It just kind of come out. So, Anyways, this is a video in video response to Joe, Trader Joe's. He bought the uh, Spyderco Persistence from me that orange one that you guys have probably seen on the channel and uh, he made a, a video talking about the trickle down economics of buying and and I'm not sure if people gave him shit or not but uh, buying that knife for $125 and I do understand and he understands I think most people do that it's a you know around $35 knife or so like something like that but uh, I sold it for about 120, 125, something like that. Um, and I had a few comments in my video too. Maybe it was just one, but I know you know some people thought that maybe that was too high, or that my Manix was maybe priced too high at 300. Um, I'm not here to make a killing, and I can promise you that I know of nobody's getting rich, like big money off of knife pimping or even knife making um, there's certainly probably a good living when you become full-time maker and you know something like er Ernest Emerson or Mike Snowdy or Rick Hinderer you know or you know the Strider guys but uh, you know your average maker I've been to a bunch of shows and talked to a bunch of makers nobody's making a killing on this stuff and I'm going to explain a little bit. Uh, when I say I have about 30 to $35 at least in materials in that persistence, um, if you haven't, you should, uh, if you don't believe it, you should go price check some G10 and uh, then go price check uh, some sharpening. <laughs> I'm looking at my notes, sorry. Some um, belts, like ceramic belts and stuff like that for the grinder. And uh, you'll see that when you start to grind hardened steel, like I reground that blade, like I reground the Manix 2 blade, uh, all that stuff, you know, it just takes materials and belts and ceramic belts aren't super cheap. Um, and then the G10 is not cheap. And then you got your, well, in the Manix 2, I put the lime green liner in there. <clears throat> in that persistence, I just want to keep it as thin as possible. So that lacks that liner. Um, but again, in that persistence pertaining to Joe's knife, I, uh, look at that, I kind of like that design right there, with that belly on the bottom, and then it comes out to like a tanto. I don't know if you guys like this format, format, sorry. Um, but anyways, how that pertain, you know, to Joe's EDC, ultimate EDC, I forgot whatever I called it. I just want to keep it as thin as possible. Okay. So Joe had a great point. If uh, if I completely change the knife, you know, is it the same knife? Or if anybody changes the knife, is it the same knife? I don't know. You could probably debate about it, but I can totally see where he's coming from, and I feel the same way as he does. That knife was completely taken apart. Every single square inch of the knife was touched and, and redone, reshaped the handle, uh, threw away the scales, put new scales on it, uh, built a custom backspacer, you know, and everything's flushed up perfect and everything's rounded and uh, Again in the material cost pocket clip refinishing that pocket clip um, Modifying the pocket clip so it fit into the regular holes that were there You know, you can't just screw it in the holes and call it good. It just doesn't on that knife it didn't work like that um, then you got the glow powder in the backspacer so you're looking at about thirty dollars an ounce for the glow powder that I use. Um, it's supposed to be top grade stuff, from what I can tell, it is. Uh, so the same thing when I go to that Manix two, and why I priced it at three hundred. I mean, I'm just looking at material cost and what it cost me to make, and then you know you got to get paid something for your time. So in that Manix two, I had some huge uh, milled out areas inside the handle for the G10. I'm mean, not G10 the uh, glow powder inside the handle you know so that cost money and um, the lanyard bead cost a lot not a lot of time but 
even two hours time you figure even at ten dollars an hour you're still looking at twenty twenty dollars if I wanted to make ten dollars an hour I could go be a greeter at Walmart but you know not that there's anything wrong with that but uh, I do this and I think the other guys do it because we love it it's it's not to make money the money's nice but the money basically pays you for a little bit of your time and the materials and then you get the satisfaction of you know the completed knife and people I'm not speaking for anybody else but I'm sure it's the same for even people like Tough Thumbs and stuff um, to put it on video you know and share it with possibly the world uh, is, is very satisfying um, and for me keeping this Mannix is very satisfying to use this knife that's completely different from any other Mannix you know so, I, I don't know. It's, uh, I don't think it was priced too high at 300 for that Mannix. And I definitely don't think that Persistence was priced too high at 125 Even if you're looking at 30 materials, 30 for the knife, we're at 60 So you got about another, what, 70 to go or something like that. It's late and I hadn't had much sleep. Um, but I can tell you that there's about five hours worth of labor in that knife, in Joe's knife. So I don't know, what's that round? Maybe around twelve, thirteen dollars an hour. Uh, that's not terrible, you know. I got paid to do the job, not complaining. Um, but I certainly did not make a killing. And um, same thing on that Manix. So uh, I don't know. I think there are reasonable prices, and I think most people would agree. Um, but what I really wanted to make this video for, kind of talked all the way around the subject, uh, trickle down economics. And I am by no means an economic expert or anything like that. And, but uh, I think Joe made a really good point. Um, I'm saving for a bead blast cabinet, and I hadn't spent a penny of that money. You know, it's just going to sit in PayPal until I decide uh, how I'm going to get set up with a cabinet. But. Um, so Joe had said, think about if you make cabinets, blasting cabinets, he's going to buy a cabinet and possibly stimulate the economy, you know, a little bit. But if we all do our part, you know, we might be able to get the USA back on its feet. Who knows? So uh, to continue that theory a little bit more would be uh, the knife was sharpened on sharpening stones made by Spider Co. And, uh, you know, Spider Co. is all U.S. made on their sharpening stones, I believe. Uh, the strop was from Knives Plus, all made in USA. I think Knives Plus actually makes those strops. Uh, basically, the initial edge, after being uh, tumbled, was sharpened by the razor sharp paper wheels. And I believe they are made in the USA. I could be wrong on that. Um, the ceramic belts were bought from Super Grit. So, you know, all these businesses were affected in the making of that knife. Uh, Alpha Knife Supply for the G10. Uh, glow Ink for that glow powder. And that's $30 an ounce for that glow powder. Uh, the etchant used to etch the blade. Uh, the DevCon Epoxy. That's made in USA. You know, so, uh, and there's probably more that I'm missing. The people who made the clip, which possibly China made I don't know but I bought it from knife kits so I don't know it's uh I think it was a very good point that Joe made something as mundane as modifying a knife really does touch a lot of different hands and the money does not just you know all um, stay locked up I guess I don't know I think it was a great video I'm gonna attach this as a video response for Joe uh, let me know if you guys like this kind of format here. So there's the completed projects. Yeah. Come on, alright. Bottom one, maybe a ring fighter of some sort. Let me know if you like this format, guys. Just figure I'd give you something to look at other than the same old knives. So, yeah. Kaylin, what does your shirt say? What is it? it doesn't say butt turk flies. It says girls rule. Show me. Girls rule, boys drool. Ah, you think so?